So before we get started, let's take a look at the tools that I'm going to be using to get this job done. Obviously, we've got the vitally important black carbon fibre vinyl. This is 3M Wrap Film Series 1080. I've got a measuring device, insulation tape, a roll of knifeless tape. This one is called Wrap Cut, a squeegee, a sharp knife, a bottle of alcohol, no, not the drinking kind, it's not that kind of video. A microfiber cloth, and last but by absolutely no means least, a hairdryer. A heat gun would be better, but I haven't got a heat gun, so a hairdryer is going to have to do. There'll be links in the description of this video to where you can find all of the stuff that I'm using. Now, with all jobs to do with adhesives or painting, preparation is the most important phase. I actually washed the tank over yesterday using just water and washing up liquid. Important not to use any kind of car shampoo for this stage because it might have some sort of a wax in it which will leave a residue on the tank that we don't want. The reason I washed the tank yesterday is so that today it would be completely dry because any moisture hiding in cracks and crevices can affect how the vinyl sticks and cause it later to lift up. For the next step we need to get rid of any stickers or trim panels that are getting in the way. The place I bought the tank from has obviously already removed the side plastic trim panel so we don't have to worry about those. But we are going to need to get rid of these stickers telling me to read the owner's manual and I can only use unleaded petrol but I already know those so I think I'm going to be okay without them. Obviously this sticker is at least 10 years old, so it's left a horrible sticky residue on there. But we will deal with that in a minute. I did see on a tips and tricks video the other day that a good way to do this is with a piece of fishing line. You just put the fishing line under the edge and then saw the sticker off. Sounds like a great idea, if only I had some fishing line. So now our tank is mostly clean, clear of all stickers and things, but we need to do another stage of cleaning to get rid of all of, well for a start, this horrendous sticky residue here. And also any pre-sap road tar wax residues or anything, because any kind of wax coating on the paintwork will actually cause the vinyl not to stick as well. This is where the alcohol comes into play. Put a healthy dose onto my microfiber cloth. Just doing a lovely job of taking off that glue there. It smells like tequila. So the whole thing, a nice, good, solid rubbing. That's what she said. Paying special attention to your grooves, your cracks, and your holes. That's also what she said. Clean around this rim as well. This is getting ridiculous. There we go, that's all nice and clean. And we're ready to stick some stuff onto it. Now the vinyl that I've got is 50 centimeters wide and a meter and a half long. Which means that although you could possibly wrap this tank in one piece if you were a highly skilled professional vinyl wrapper, I can't because the vinyl that I've got isn't wide enough. And also, I'm not a highly skilled professional vinyl wrapper. So this is where this stuff comes into play, the wrap cut knifeless tape. You stick this stuff onto the tank before the vinyl, and it's actually made up of two parts. There's the sticky backing, and then there's the filament stuck onto that. And then you pull the filament through the vinyl, and it gives you a perfect cut, hence the name knifeless tape. So what I plan to do is to follow this line up the back here, come across this shoulder edge, and then off the front of the tank, giving me a nice contoured split line which follows the edge of the body line of the tank. Before I can get on and actually stick anything down here, I need to figure out exactly which one of these three lines I'm going to follow. They've got the top line which goes over here, there's a middle one here, and then the bottom one comes right down here to the corner. Now, ideally, I would quite like to follow this edge all the way down to the corner here. But the question is, do I have enough vinyl to go from this corner all the way over the top and to reach to this corner? This is where the insulation tape comes into play because we can take our measuring device, stick a piece of tape from one end, which we will trim off at exactly 50 centimeters, so that when I now take my 50 centimeters long piece of tape, then we can stick it down following the contours of the tank and see Without a shadow of a doubt, the vinyl will only reach to here. We could stretch it by about two centimeters to get it the full length, but I think that's a bit risky, to be honest. So what about if I were to go sideways across? So if I put my piece of tape over the furthest forward part of the tank that I'm gonna to go to, down here. Unfortunately, we can see that it's exactly the same problem. A fair old gap of nearly seven centimeters there. So that answers two questions for us. First of all, we're gonna to have to follow this upper line because otherwise we're not gonna reach far enough into the corner. And the second answer is that we've got more distance this way than we have this way. So the vinyl is gonna be going along the tank. Really should have figured this out before I did the cleaning because now I've got insulation tape, sticky residue nonsense on the tank, so I need to clean it again. But now what I'm gonna do, I take the wrap cut, the filament of this stuff is off to one side of the tape and the tape itself sadly isn't very flexible so 
what that means is, if I've got tight corners going to the left, I'm gonna to wanna to keep the tape with the filament on the left. So I've got a soft curve here, a soft curve here, and a pretty tight curve here. So I'm gonna to wanna to have the filament on the upper edge, which means starting from the front here. And then by pulling the tape tight, guiding it with a finger, you can actually follow the shape of this body line. A nice long straight bit. And then follow this line all the way down off the edge of the tank. Just gonna make sure that this is well stuck all the way along. Don't want this moving once and plonking about with sticky back vinyl on top of it. I'm really happy with how this looks here, so thankfully what you can do is to pull it back and try again. So that's gonna be our seam on the left-hand side between the two pieces of vinyl, following all the way down that body line from front to back. Through the wonders of video trickery, the other side is already done. So now we've got our two split lines marked out front to back and we're almost ready to put some vinyl on. But first we have to do another run on each side of the wrap cut tape because we're gonna overlap the two pieces of film. There's one piece, there's the other piece, and then the wrap cut is gonna cut through both of those. So what that means is we're gonna be left with the excess here underneath the second piece of film and that's gonna be messy trying to get it all out. So what I'm gonna do here is another run of this tape parallel to the first piece. This one doesn't have to be so exact, it just has to roughly follow the shape of that first piece of tape. Just to make sure we don't get these mixed up, I'm going to spread them a little bit further apart like that. What that's going to allow us to do is to lay the top piece on, overlap it over this tape, and then using this second line, we'll cut through that, get rid of the excess, and then we've only got a tiny, tiny little bit of excess that we'll then have to remove later on. If it's not obvious what's happening here, just be patient. It'll all become clear when we actually do it. Incidentally, 3M do actually have a product called Triline, which is designed exactly for this purpose. And it's called Triline because it's one piece of tape that has three filaments in it. So when you lay down this line, you've automatically got parallel filaments that you can use to create these butt joints. And obviously the workshop elf has already done the other side. We are now ready to stick some vinyl onto this tank. But obviously, once again, I touched it quite a lot throughout that process with my dirty digits. So I'm just gonna give it another wipe. Now we actually need to cut out our first piece of vinyl. I have got a pair of scissors here. These weren't in the initial tool lineup, but I'm sure you can cut me a little slack. <laughs> <laughs> and that leaves us another 80 centimeters. I said millimeters earlier on, didn't I? I meant centimeters. So hopefully get our side pieces done. So, hair dryer and knife at the ready. We can actually stick something down. Now in the data sheet that goes along with this vinyl stuff, it says you need to be working in an environment of at least 16 degrees centigrade. And also ideally, whatever you're wrapping should have been in that environment for at least eight hours before you start so that everything is nice and warm. Because as it gets colder, the adhesive becomes less effective, the vinyl becomes less flexible and your job's gonna be a lot more difficult than it needs to be. So I am just gonna get stuck in. I'll be honest, I hate this bit. Times I've done this before, it always seems like the most goes wrong right at the very beginning. Fold that like that so I can get this central without worrying about sticking to the rest of the tank and start on that edge there. We have made contact. Okay, so straight away, we're gonna run into problems here because we're going on a curve in that direction that's also curving in this direction. So what I'm actually gonna do, pull the backing right off working towards myself so that I can stop the tank from sliding away. A little bit of heat from the hairdryer, just to make it nice and soft and flexible, and then try and give myself a little bit of a stretch over the hump of the tank. And then try and give this a little bit of a stretch over the hump of the tank. I'm not stretching it like crazy because tension is not our friend in this situation. And then hopefully we'll be able to just gently squeegee out these wrinkles, maybe even by repositioning this bit, give it a little bit of warmth. And then we can very gently put that into place. Thank you. 
We want to try as much as possible to flatten it past our knifeless tape here because we want to have as little stretching over the tape area as possible because then be less likelihood of the, the vinyl actually shrinking back. And what we can also do to help ourselves out a little bit here is this area here, we can actually just cut this back and relieve some of the tension in our vinyl down here. We're looking good so far. When we come to this area, we can see we've got a little bit of tension going on there. We'll try and lift that up to get rid of that big wrinkle. Bit of warmth in there so it shrinks back. So now I want to do, because I want to be able to get to this corner, and because we've got scalloped sort of a feature here, warm this very gently and try and very softly stretch it over that edge. So in order to get access to this area in here, I'm going to make a relief cut, which is going to release the tension in this space of the vinyl. See, that suddenly released this tension here, made everything a bit easier for us in this area, in order for us to be able to just work the vinyl onto that edge there. Now we've done that, we can cut the side piece out again to relieve some of the tension and the, the crumpling up that's going on in this corner here. So now we've got the situation where we want to deal with this bit here. The 3M data sheet says to apply a little bit of heat. Think about it. First, we want to get rid of these air bubbles here. Back to the original plan. And then from the lowest point, by the pressure and work back towards the edges. And this ensures that you get an even amount of tension across all of this area rather than it just spanning the gap. There we've come right to that front edge now. The thumb just to push the vinyl round the corner there, and then we can trim it off. And that is inside, all nicely flattened down with no air bubbles, no ripples. So, to save you the torture of watching me do the other side. Catch you when we get to the next stage. And there we go. That's the whole front edge now, nicely tucked around the corner there, stuck down all the way along our soon-to-be join lines. Now, start off by doing a rough trim of the excess here. The rest of it, I'm going to smooth down as much as possible. Areas like this here where I've got just lots of wrinkles, I'm just going to trim around that. There we go. Now as long as I get that tucked away back on the bike before my OCD starts having a hissy fit, I think that can stay as it is. So now, very excitingly, we can march onwards to the first bit of using our amazing knifeless tape. So what we do with this stuff is first of all pull it away from the bodywork. You can nick in the red part of the tape just up to the filament and that allows us to actually remove the red tape from the end there. Then to hold down the red piece, put the filament a tug and then and actually pull it through the vinyl all the way to the very end. Now we can actually take this excess piece Simply remove it. Important not to forget the backing to the knifeless tape as well. And then just to make sure that we're sitting properly on the area that we just cut through, squeeze it all back down again. Give it a little bit of heat just in case it wants to shrink back a bit because I'd rather have this shrunk back before we get to making the main cut. There we go. So now get on with the next piece of vinyl. You're going to need a piece that is 50 and then with a depth of, let's say, 35, just to have a little bit of extra to play with. We have made contact. I'm just going to work into this corner here. Uh, 
tiny little bit of a stretch there just to get us around this slight curve. There we go, on that back edge we are at the tape. We're at that edge. In this area, we're actually going to have to come around the corner a little bit, so... There we go, we are up to the corner there as well. A little trick I learnt from the, the CK Raps channel. I would recommend you have a look. I learnt a lot of stuff from watching that guy's videos. If you stretch around a corner like that and then heat it, the vinyl actually shrinks around the corner and pulls itself into that corner. So there we are on that front edge. A little bit of wrinklage going on here. Hopefully, should be able to just piston that off. And then... There we go, that is down. We don't need to worry about coming too far into this area because we need to be able to stick the trim panel back onto this and that's held on with double-sided sticky tape. So I'd rather be sticking to metal work than to vinyl. And the last bit is this little back corner. Give it a bit of warmth. Back along the edge and then try and do the little corner trick down here again. So stretch around the corner. Gosh, we are all in on this side. That was far easier than the top. That's amazed even me how quickly that went together. So now we can trim this off. So now what will happen when we pull this filament through, it's gonna cut both the top piece and the bottom piece at the same time, giving us a perfect butt joint between the two. Cut off the red bit, give it a tug to get it started, and then we are away. And then we just pull it through. What that will now allow us to do is to carefully remove this piece. Then we need to remove the red piece from the tape and also the excess that was left over from our first piece of vinyl. We pull both of those out, pulling low and away from the second piece so we don't disturb it too much. I'm hoping that it doesn't break like that because that would be disastrous. But luckily we have another end. down. This made a horrible job of the cut there. Yeah, so uh, my sage words of advice would be to get the 3M product because this one has done a pretty terrible job, sadly. And we have a joint. It's relatively neat, but I've seen better. I'm not really happy with that. Now, because the, uh, as you pull the wrap cut through, it causes the micro stretches in the material. I'm just going to give it a bit of warmth to make sure that we can make them sit completely flat to each other. So there we go. For better or for worse, there's that join done. Now, what's left on this side is just to trim off this last tail end piece. Smooth it down. And there we go. One side finished with a join mostly following the body line. For some reason, the tape has actually decided to cut the corner. And here we've got a little bit of a zigzag, but um, I'll be honest, I've seen worse. So now we move swiftly on to the other side, which obviously is going to be just a mirror image of the first side, hopefully with a more successful cut along this tape. down at the front. Once again, we've got a little bit of a wrinkle here. Hopefully we should be able to just pop the whole thing off. Not quite what I was going for, but it did the job anyway. Okay, so I need a little bit of heat here because I've got some wrinkles that I've introduced to my shoddy squeegee work. So I'm gently lay that around the corner. Lovely stuff. And now we're coming to the area again that we need to stretch a tiny bit around this corner. Same 
corner trick again. Pull it around the corner. And then again, hopefully when we heat it, hugs that corner even tighter, magic. Once again, got a little bit of air in this corner here. Pop it open like that, give it a bit of heat. And then, gosh, we are in the corner. All right, we're in the home stretch now. Trim this bottom edge back. Lift up the red tape, nick in the red bit, pull the red bit away. A tug at the end of the vinyl, get the cut started, and then we can haul away. And once again, it's broken. Trim down at the back here. And that is the second joint, all done. Which is in some ways better, and in other ways worse than the first. But ultimately, does the job. We've got two perfectly meeting together pieces of vinyl, giving us an out overall carbon fiber covered petrol tank, but we're not quite done because still got to take care of this little drum skin, which is in the space where the petrol cap is going to go. So to start with, I'm going to give myself a fighting chance by cutting about a centimeter and a half inside of the edge of the hole. Then I'm just going to gently heat around this edge and slowly work it into the tank hole. There we go. We are, for all intents and purposes, now finished. That is the tank all carbon fiber vinyled up. And I think, to be honest, given the money invested in this, 30 euros on the vinyl, the tape stuff cost 15 euros about five years ago. So for 45 euros and change for things like alcohol, I've now got a whole new look to my petrol tank. And it's black, so it will now match the motorbike. Now, of course, in closing, for those of you who've done a bit of vinyl wrapping and know what you're talking about, you're probably screaming at the screen right now, Andy, what about the post heating? Well, I hear you because once you're finished, for areas of high tension, that is areas where you've stretched it a lot, so for me that would be areas like this front corner here, you're supposed to heat the vinyl to around 100 degrees centigrade. And what this does is it makes the vinyl forget what shape it used to be. So this whole effect of you heating it and it returning back to the way it was goes away and there's no chance of that vinyl then shrinking back later when it's been left in the sun, when it gets hot, when it gets cold, when it gets wet. So I'm gonna do what I can. Whether it gets hot enough, I don't know, but. So there we go, all finished. That is my 3M carbon fiber effect vinyl wrap of my FZ1N petrol tank. It's now black, beautiful carbon fiber effect. I'm not gonna say it was fast because it is now dark outside. I'm not gonna say it was easy. I've sworn more today than I think I have done in the last month. I wouldn't even go as far as to say it was completely successful. These edges, I'm not super happy with. There's a couple of little blemishes and bits where I've overstretched it, but on the whole, I think it looks good enough to stick on the bike. The beauty of it is for 30 euros worth of vinyl, I could tear it all off, do it all again. So I'm gonna leave it for now, see how it handles the weather and the outside world. Incidentally, in the technical spec sheets for this stuff on the 3M website, they say that once you've finished your wrap, you should leave the part or the vehicle in the warm for a few hours after you've finished, because this allows the adhesive to form a stronger bond with the bodywork and hopefully, ultimately, give you a longer lasting wrap. No problem for me, I'm gonna leave this up here in the kitchen tonight. I don't fancy trying to fit it to the bike in the dark and the cold. That means I'm finished. I look forward to all of your comments telling me what I did wrong, what I could have done better, and uh, I mean that sincerely. I'm actually looking forward to it because it means that next time I do it, hopefully I can do a better job. Already I think I've done a better job this time than I did last time. Maybe next time it could be perfect. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please do give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. It's all fine. And if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel and click the little bell thingy to make sure you get notifications every time a new video comes out and you don't miss anything in the future. So until next time, bye! <laughs>